some examples of cinema graphs. Let's go to today's examples. Cinema graphs are looping videos, which are, you see them frequently on websites. They're going out a little bit. This is the reason I'm not basing a homework on them in this particular iteration of uh, DM72, because flash animation is, is taking over. But let's have a look at some typical examples. Basically, they're like photographs, except that only a part of the photograph is animated. The rest of the photograph is static. And because of that, it means they compress a lot more than you would otherwise be able to do. There's only part of the image that is moving. So here you can see a photograph of a street cafe. The only part that's changing is the car being reflected in the window. But at the same time, this gives the impression of being a video. Let's have a look at another one. I'm going to expand it so you can see it a little more easily. So the only part that's actually changing are the curtains on the left, the woman's arm, and the rotating globe in the center. Everything else is unchanging. Everything else can be compressed. It can be temporally compressed to produce a very small video file. Again, this is for Quantro. And you can see that the only part that's changing are the butterfly's wings. Everything else is static. This is quite low resolution, incidentally. You can see the pixelation. So these are actually GIF files. As I say, these are going out, so there's no reason for us really to spend too much time on these, but it's worth understanding why they were made and what we can do with a similar technology. Again, mostly static. The only part that's moving is the girl's hand and her arm. Everything else can be compressed all the way down to a static image. So let's have a look at that in Photoshop. I'm just going to go over here and we'll delete our rotoscoping. I'm going to go here, expand the layers menu and just get rid of the filter, delete filter mask, disable smart filters, and now we're back to our original video. Okay, and we want to turn this into a looping video. Well, one thing that's going to be a problem is that it starts, well, actually, we need to get rid of those initial frames. It starts like this, and it ends like this. So the sky is quite different. Right, let's see what we can do to change that. First of all, I'm going to go back to the beginning again and expand this and just find out where... There we go. So the change is about here. It's about five frames in. So I'll just hover my cursor over the beginning of the video layer, pull it over. Yep, that looks like it's all the way, it's good all the way back to the start. And I'm going to go to the middle. This is about, how long is it, 12 seconds? Well, I've got rid of about a second or so at the beginning, so it's now a little bit over nine seconds long. And I'm just going to guesstimate this, go to about the middle, doesn't matter where, Maybe there's a particular part of it that looks better to me. And I want to cut it. I want to cut this in half. And we do that by making sure that our video layer is selected. And we use the little scissors icon over here to the left. And there we go. We've suddenly split this video into two. But you'll notice that either side of the cut, it's seamless. The video flows from one, the end of one video, into the start of the next absolutely seamlessly. And that's something we can use. We can now put this half in front of this half. Let's do that. 
So I'm going to actually move this layer one copy up here outside the video group. Move this one to the right. Move this one to the left. I can put it on the same layer, make it a video group again if I want. Where do I do that? There we go. So now we've got, if we move them so there isn't a break between them, we've actually got the starting frame being almost the same as the ending frame. So this is going to loop seamlessly. However, we've solved one problem, but we've replaced it with another problem. So look at the middle here. We get a big jump because now we have the original ending frame next to the original starting frame. We're going to use a transition. We're going to blend these two together. And the way we do that is by going again to the left side here. And we look at this little icon here, which is a square, kind of diagonally cut in half with a dark square on the top, sorry, a dark triangle on the top and a light triangle on the bottom. And we just drag that down here. Oh, we're not going to be able to do that. We've got to click on it. We click on it, we get this pop-up menu of options. So we don't drag on it, we click on it, and we get the pop-up menu. And here are our transition options. All of these, incidentally, you can do manually. There's nothing particularly special about any of them. So we've got fade, we've got cross fade, we've got fade with black, in other words, fade to black, fade with white, fade with color. Not very exciting, any of them, but cross fade is quite useful because when we drag this cross fade over to the boundary between these two halves of the animation, you'll see that there's a dark square appearing. And that indicates the length of the transition. We can change the duration here. It's currently one second. We've got a slider, so we can take it all the way up to 10 seconds, which seems kind of pointless. So let's take it to, I don't know, maybe about one and a half seconds. And we can also click in here and type in the exact value. And again, I'm going to drag crossfade down. And you can now see that the dark rectangle is a bit wider. It's taking up one and a half seconds on the timeline. And then I just release the mouse button. OK, a couple of things happen. First. First off, the video's got shorter, and it's got shorter by the length of the transition because the two videos are being overlaid, they're being blended for those one and a half seconds. So obviously, the overall length of the animation is, is one and a half seconds shorter. Second thing that's happened is we've got this sort of bow tie icon here over the blend. Look at how it works. I'm going to scrub through this. And you can see it's blending between the end of the original video and the start. And there's a slight camera movement. You can see right in the middle of the transition, we've actually got two outlines here for this rock, which that's a problem. We, I don't know if we can get around that. We just hope people don't notice. But obviously, it's better if you have a fixed camera position for something that you're going to do this, this particular operation on. Right, so let's just play this again. I'm going to hit the space bar for play. And there we go. And now the end of our movie is exactly the same as the beginning. That's basically the basis of our cinema graph. However, let's have a look at this again. Everything's moving. The sky is moving. The water's moving. 
The camera, unfortunately, is also moving slightly, but we'll just work with that. So we want to get rid of unnecessary animation here. We just want a few things to be animated. And that could be the girl's hand, it could be the butterfly's wings on the Quantro bottle, it could be the reflected car in the store window, in the cafe window. So we need to make a mask. We need to blank out part of the animation with a still image. And if we're very clever about this, we might also get rid of this little problem here with the movement of the rocks. Okay, I'm going to go back to the first half of the video to a frame I think is okay in terms of the water. Water looks good, and I'm going to freeze the water. How do we do this? Let's go into the smart object. So I'm going to double click on the one of these layers, the little icons. And now we go inside the smart object. You can see here we've gone from the Arctic light, and now we're on layer one PSB, not PSD, PSB. And I'll find that frame again. Let's say it's there. Control C. And now this image, the static image, is in the memory of the computer. So let's, con let's close this tab. Hit the X key up here, save changes, no. And now we'll hit Control V. There is our static image. So that's what we want to use for the water all the way through this animation. However, when I hit Control V, I pasted it inside the video group. So we want it outside the video group if we're going to have it running at the same time. So click, drag up until we get a thin blue line, not a thin blue square, because that's going to keep it inside the group, but blue line like that, very fine double blue line, release. And now you can see it's on a different layer here in the timeline. And we just pull it back. OK. And I'm going to extend it for the duration of the timeline. So now, since it's on the top, we have no animation at all. Everything is completely static. What we want to do now is just cut away the part that we want animated. So in this case, I'm going to say it's probably the sky. Let's have the sky. We could have the water running. But then we'd have this problem of the rocks, so let's make it the sky animated. I'm going to hit Control Plus to zoom in a little bit and move over here and start to outline the sky. I'll just use the plain old lasso and I'll start to just draw an outline. I'm, I'm not going to do it hugely carefully, Ooh, definitely not hugely carefully, when I release the mouse button, we get a selection based on what I did. And then I'm going to hit Q. Remember Q, the mask tool, which kind of simulates what used to be called Ruby Lift. And I can use B to paint to refine my selection using the brush tool. And I can use E, the eraser, to cut away. So this is a nice, elegant way to refine a selection. Then I'm going to go over here, and I'll just continue to use the brush tool. Sorry, the, the eraser tool. And move it over the mountains. Kind of, sort of, like this. Again, if I make a slight mistake, doesn't matter too much. I can hit the Brush tool to improve the selection and the Eraser tool to sharpen up corners and peaks if I need to. 
Then for the relatively flat horizon here, I'll click once on the left side of the horizon and then go to the right side, hold down shift and click again and it draws a straight line between those two clicks. So again, click, go somewhere else, hold down shift, click the second time and that just draws a straight line. All right, let's um, Let's increase the size of this eraser with the right hand square bracket tool. And I don't want to make a mistake here, so again I'm going to use shift click to draw a straight line. And here I'm just scribbling away and getting rid of the unwanted mask at the top of the, of the frame. And, of course, we could also go back into the regular tool. And let's, let's actually do that. We a slight mistake there. Control-Z. Control-Z is your friend, just like Google search. And then I'll hit Q. And now I've got a selection. And I can add to that selection with the lasso tool, just holding shift. Be a little careful here. There we go. And again, now I'll use maybe, yeah, maybe I'll go back again to the eraser tool. Q, E for eraser, just get rid of that, that looks pretty good, let's hit Q a second time, and you can see there's actually an area here, this is where the marching ants are quite useful, you can see there's an area here that I, I missed, so I'll go over that, and there's another area I think there, yeah, so this looks pretty good. Right, this is the area we want to chop out of our layer 2 which are our static layer. So once we've got it as a selection, I'm just going to hit delete, and there we go. Control D to get rid of the selection. And now, what have we got? We've got a static C, and we've got an animated sky. And that will compress as a GIF, generally better as a GIF, or as an MP4, to a much smaller size than the original movie file. So, useful technique here. And you can also use this just in any particular scenes of your animation, where you need to have a mixture of a static image and a moving image. So, again, let's go through that. We've got our movie file here and we it's a it's a video layer as well as a smart object we cut it using the scissors tool we move one behind the other we move part one to the end of part two and then we merge them in the middle using a crossfade using this tool here and dragging it down to the boundary between the two parts of the video. Then we make a screenshot, and for that we've actually got to go inside the smart object, and we create our screenshot where we've got a nice shot of the water, for example. We put that on the top of the video layer, and we cut it away to just show the parts of the video that we want to keep animated and everything else becomes static. Simple as that. Anything anybody wants to see again about this? Okay, that is Cinemagraphs.